For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's rise up. Let's begin to bless the name of the Lord. Let's begin to glorify his holy name. Let's bless him. Let's give him all glory, all honor, all adoration. Let's thank him for everything that he has done. For it's not by our power nor by our mind that we are here today, but by his spirit. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we glorify you. Father, we thank you. We thank you for everything that you've done in our lives. We thank you for what you're still doing. We thank you for what you are still going to do. We thank you, Father Lord, because you never leave us. Even though the time that we are not faithful unto you, you are always faithful unto us. Father, glory be unto your holy name. You are the ancient of days, the king of kings, the lord of lords, the great I am that I am, the mighty man of war. Father, we bless your holy name for your divine providence over us, for sustaining us even in this time of crisis. Father, Lord, we bless your holy name. We thank you that you are increasing us. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because all your promises, you are fulfilling it in our lives. And we know that even the ones we've not seen, we will see it. We thank you because we know that we will recover all of you have lost. We thank you, Lord Jesus, because you are always there for us. Thank you, Jesus. Ancient of days, Lion of Judah, King of kings, Lord of lords, the great I am that I am, the mighty man of war, the lift glory and the lifter of our head. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let's sing this song. Glory, glory. Glory to the King. Sing glory, glory, glory. Thou art Lord, 
Let's thank him for everything he has done for us. Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Before we sit down, let's say this prayer for Say, O oh God, arise. Oh God, arise. Let my glory shine this year. In the name of Jesus, O oh God, arise. Let my glory shine this year. Let our glory shine this year. Let the glory of this ministry shine this year. Oh God, arise. Let our glory shine this year in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Say evil eyes. Evil eyes. Monitoring my glory. For evil. Receive blindness. In the name of Jesus. Evil eyes. That's monitoring our glory for evil. Receive blindness. Receive blindness. Receive blindness. Receive blindness. Every evil eye that's monitoring our glory for evil. Receive blindness. Receive blindness. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Fading glory of my family line. Fading glory of my family line. Hear the voice of the living God. Resurrect. Arise and shine in the name of Jesus, fading glory of my family line. We are the voice of the living God. Resurrect, arise and shine. Resurrect, arise and shine. Resurrect, arise and shine. Resurrect, arise and shine. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. To any power on assignment, to exchange, hover, or terminate my glory. Die by fire. In the name of Jesus, any power on assignment to cover, to exchange, or to terminate our glory. Die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire, die by fire. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Say, my glory, receive the touch of God. Arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, my glory, receive the touch of God. Arise and shine, arise and shine. Arise and shine in the mighty name of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for bringing us here. We bless your holy name. We glorify your holy name. As we go, let your Holy Spirit continue to lead us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Any power that's contrary to your power, on assignment to disturb us or to make, to make us miss this time, Father, Lord Jesus, we cast and we bind it and we cast it out in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Holy Spirit of God, take the heaven Cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's have a seat. Good morning, church. The title of this message is My Glory, Arise and Shine. My Glory, Arise and Shine. And we are going to check this reference. Let's go to our Bible reading. Isaiah 60. From verse, I'm going to read from verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 60 from verse 1 to 2. And he said... Arise, shine, for the light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. I'm not hearing any amen. 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 So shall we in Jesus' name. So what God is telling us here is that he wants us to shine. And God is commanding us. He said we should arise and shine. For what? For our light is come. And what? And the glory of the Lord is risen upon us. What is our light? Jesus is our light. Jesus is the light of our glory. Because we have been given Jesus so we can rise and shine anytime. So the Lord has sent Jesus for us 
and because of Jesus, we can rise up and we can shine. It is him that has already lifted us from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And our shining shall never diminish in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Before we go on, let's just, just um, define some of the time. You know, what do we mean by glory? You know, glory. Your glory is your divine capability to become what you are purposed to be in life. Your glory is your divine capability to become what you are purposed to be in life. That means what God proposed you to be, what God created you to be. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So Amen. your glory, that means your glory is what you are. It is what you are. It is what your life is. It is what everything God wants you to be. Your glory is, was attached to you on back by God. Your glory is attached unto you on back by, by God. That means God has attached your glory to you. It has been, you know, the Bible God to our told said, before I form thee, I do what? I, I, I already ordained you. So that means that glory has been with you even before your mother conceived you. Because God has a plan for everything. So what do we mean by to arise? To arise means to stand up, to get up, and to come out alive. To arise means to stand up, to get up, and to come out alive. That means, that, means, that means that you should get active. You should get activated for performance. You should start doing something. To arise, that means you should stop sleeping. You should get up from your slumber. You should rise up and then what? And decide to be what God wants you to be. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So what does it mean to shine? To shine means to give out a quality of brightness. To give out a quality of brightness. To provide light. To glow. To beam. To radiate and to illuminate. To shine means to give out a quality of brightness, to provide light, to glow, to beam, to radiate, and to illuminate. We shall shine in the mighty name of Jesus. So when we are saying, my glory shall arise and shine, what do we mean? The first thing is that you want to get up and start manifesting what God says you have. You want to get up and start manifesting what God says you have. When you say, oh, my glory arise and shine. Tell me, I'm saying, oh, I am getting up. I am going to start manifesting what God said I am going to be. So, and secondly, it also means that you want your life to be transformed to the original state God meant it to be. For your life to be transformed to the original state God meant it to be. God created you for a purpose. God created me for a purpose. And until you start fulfilling that purpose, you are not yet where God wants you to be. So that glory is the purpose of God for your life. It is where God intended you to be and where you will stay till you get back to him. So that is that purpose that you need to rise up and then get. That is why God said, arise and shine for the light is come. Meaning that you can arise, you can shine because Jesus is there as our light, as our guide to make sure that this glory we we'll get it, and we shall get it in the mighty name of Jesus. All our glory shall arise and shine in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not hearing amen. amen. So when you say your glory shall arise and shine, it also means that you want the light to illuminate all the darkness around you and to become bright. That means you want the light of God to illuminate every darkness around you, anything that has been covering you, anything that has been preventing you from going forward, anything that has been moving you, that has been retarding your progress, meaning you want the light of God to illuminate it and for it to become bright and for the darkness to be cast away. All darkness that is covering anyone's glory shall be eradicated in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And the light of God shall shine on it in the name of Jesus. Amen. What does it also mean when you say you want to arise and shine? It means that you are set up, ready to manifest and to fulfill your divine destiny. You are set up, you are ready to manifest and to fulfill your divine destiny, meaning that you are doing what? Your divine destiny is where? Is where your glory is taking you. So without manifesting that glory, that glory is not shining, that means that destiny cannot be fulfilled. But once your glory starts shining, you will easily fulfill your divine destiny. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So what happens when, you, when your glory arises and shines? What happens? That's why we are going to go into our reading. The first thing is that you will be enlarged with abundance and your glory shall speak out for you. You will be enlarged with abundance and your glory shall speak out for you. And I'm going to read Isaiah 60 verse 5 to 7. You will be enlarged with abundance and your glory will speak out for you. So Isaiah 60 verse 5 to 7. And it says, it says, Then thou, sh then thou shalt see and flow together, and thy heart shall fear and be enlarged. 
because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. The multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedaries of Midian and Ephah, all they from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense, and they shall show forth the praises of the Lord. All the flocks of Kedah shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of Nabaroth shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on my altar, and I will glorify the house of my glory. So what this is telling us is that you what? You will be enlarged. You will be filled with abundance. When your glory starts shining, you will be filled with abundance. You will have wealth. You know, God said that he wished above all things that we should prosper as our soul is prospering. So what this means is that God has already planned all these things. And when your glory starts arising and shining, all these things will come to you naturally and you will have abundance. So all these things we are struggling for is just for us to be asking God that we should allow our gold glory. It should make us to manifest and to shine. And I pray that that's how it's going to be for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. So another thing that will happen to you when your glory arises and shines is that you will, take, you will take your position of authority in life. You will take your position of authority in life. Now let's go to uh, Genesis 43, verse 13. Genesis 43, verse 13. I want to use uh, the example of Joseph there. Because, you know, Joseph he went through a lot of things. And then when, he, when, he, when at last he came, because he was in that particular position of authority, what did he say? I'm going to read verse 13 now. He said, and Joseph said, he said, And ye shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and all that we have seen, and ye shall haste him and bring down my father with that. So you see why their glory is shining. His glory is shining. That is why it can bring people down. So that means when your glory is shining, You'll be able to do a lot of things. A lot of people are going to enjoy from it. A lot of people will be attached to it. A lot of people will, you know, will get their own glory from it and will shine. And God will help us in the name of Jesus. So you see that when your glory shines, you will take your position in life. Your, not only your ordinary position, but your position of authority, where you are meant to be. God will help us in Jesus' name. So the third one there is that when your glory arises and shines, men will bow for you. They will honor you and they will even minister to you. Not only you, but you and your household in all areas of your life. That's how it's going to be in Jesus' name. So when your glory arises and shine, men will bow for you. They will honor you. They will minister unto you and to your household in all areas of your life. Let's read verse 9 to 10 of the same chapter. Verse 9 to 10. It says, surely the eyes shall wait for me. That means before they discover any, before they discuss anything, because before they make any conclusion of any discussion, they will wait for you. You will be there. And he said, and the ship of Tarshish first, to bring thy sons from afar, and their silver and their gold with them. That means the blessing is not only for you. It's going to go beyond you. It's going to go unto your descendants unborn. So that means your children, now your great-grandchildren, your children unborn, will what? Will enjoy out of it. And he said, they are gold with them unto the name of the Lord thy God and to the Holy One of Israel, because he had glorified thee. So what this is saying is that not only you, but your children, your family, your extended everything will get to it. He said, and ten says, and the sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, and their kings shall minister unto thee, for in his wrath to smote you, but in his favor have he had mercy unto thee. Meaning that a lot of people will minister unto you. A lot of people will come to you, will become like a king, because why? Your glory is shining. Your glory shining means that you are on top of the world. Means that you are now a topic. Means that you are on the mountain top. It means that all those valley situations have disappeared. And means that it is now your time for celebration. And that is how it's going to be in the name of Jesus. So what is going to happen again when your glory starts shining? It means that your strength will continually be renewed and you will receive new honors. Your strength will continually be renewed and you will receive new honors. I want to read Job 29, 20, but I want to get it from New Living Translation. Because why? It has the exact word there. And I'm reading it. Job 29, 20. He said, he said, new honors are constantly bestowed on me, and my strength is continually renewed. New honors is, con is constantly bestowed on me, and my strength is continually renewed. That is Job 29, verse 20. He's telling us there. What is he telling us? You know, Job, for of everything he went through, even before he started doing all these things, when he was within his glory and everything, he said, new honors. People are honoring him. He was, he was being held here and there. And even at the end of the day, when his glory came back, you can see everything, be, 
we came like double unto him. And that is exactly how it's going to be. Because that means when your glory is shining, people will be honoring you. People will be bestowing honor on you. People will be bowing down to you. And people will be respecting you. In fact, you will be like even more than a king. And that is how it's going to be for us in the mighty name of Jesus. So another one is that when your glory starts to shine, your life will continue, will spread out the light of God and will continually attract unbelievers to serve your God. Your life will spread out the light of God and will continually attract unbelievers to serve your God. And that is how it's going to be in the mighty name of Jesus. So I'm reading Isaiah chapter 60, verse 3. It says, And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and the kings to the brightness of thy rising. How beautiful it is. We are talking about Christians. We have, you know, nowadays it is very, very difficult for you to see a Christian that they, people will say, oh, show me your church, let me go with you. They are no longer reading Bible, they are no longer reading anything. The only thing they are reading is you. People, you can't tell a person, a person that I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. It is your behavior. It is your character. It is the way you carry yourself, the way you talk, and the way you associate with people that people are going to know whether you are a Christian or not. Oh, I am this, I am that, I'm evangelist. That is your own category. Is that how God is seeing you? At times, he said the voice of the people is the voice of God. It is how people envisage you, how people carry you that will determine your score in level. A lot of people already know their scores. A lot of people know. There are a lot of those, oh, that one, when you talk about the person, they will just cancel it. Somebody that they've been canceling on earth. How do you think they will reckon with that person in heaven? So you can see, you can see the scores, you can see how everything is going. He said that the Gentiles shall come to their life and kings to the brightness of thy rising. That means that your life will attract lots of unbelievers. Your life will attract people to the kingdom of God. Your life will let them come and know what Jesus is doing. A lot of people are hearing about Jesus, but they don't know who Jesus is. A lot of people just know there is something, someone called Jesus, but they don't actually know. Because they are not reading their Bibles, they want to be shown. Not, don't read it to them. Don't preach it to them, but show it to them. It's through your actions that people are going to see. So and they said, when your glory starts shining, when you start living according to what God wanted you to do, according to how God wanted you to live, that is when that glory will shine. That is when people will see it and people will be reckoning with you and say, oh, that is a child of God. You don't have to proclaim yourself. It is your character, your attitude, everything that will proclaim you. The Lord will help us. And also, well, in verse 11, Verse 11 also says, it says, it says, Therefore, thy gate shall be open continually. They shall not be shut day nor night, that men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles, and that their kings may be brought. That means people will turn unto you. People will rush unto you. They will see you as a solution center. They will see you as an advisor. They will see you as a counselor. They will see you as an alpha. They will see you even as a healer. They will turn you into a sort of mini god, like the way they were healing um, Paul and everything. Why? Because the glory of God is showing in your life. Because your glory is shining. Because you are fulfilling what God wants you to be. You are exactly what right. said. The, your gate will not be shut day or night. That means throughout. You can imagine when uh, a pastor will always say that even they will call him around 11 o'clock, around midnight, around any time during the night. No, that is one, that's part of it. So there are people who rely on him a lot of things because they are seeing that that glory is what is shining in you. They want to see it and the Lord will manifest it in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. So another thing that we see when the glory of God is shining in our life is that no power will be permitted to do you any harm. No power will be permitted to do you any harm. And I'm going to go to Psalm 105, verse, verse 14. No power will be permitted to do you any harm. And Psalm 105, 14 says, He said, He suffered no man to do them wrong. Yet he reproved kings for their sakes. He would not allow anybody to do you harm. That is why the, the Bible says that God will, what? He will fight your battle for you and you will hold your peace. That is what they're saying there, that God will fight your battle for you, you will hold your peace. That means, it also means that no weapon fashioned against you will prosper. Because why? You are now the light of God. The light of God is beaming through you. The brightness of God is on you and it's illuminating all the darkness around you. And Isaiah 60, 14 also testifies to this. 14 says, He said, The sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come bending unto you. That means all those who are mocking you. All those who are calling you different names, all those who are, you know, like they have, they've rubbished you, they will what? They said they will come down bending unto thee. They say, and all that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of their feet, and they shall call thee the city of the Lord, the Zion of the Holy One 
of Israel. That means all those evil mouths that have said lots of rubbish about you, all those evil tongues, all those evil things that have been done to you, people that have already rubbished you and, and, I mean, and categorized you as rubbish, that have already done a lot of things, spoken against you, everything. They said they will do it. They said they will come back and do what? Because they are seeing the glory of God in your life, they will now come back and worship you. That means you will be what? You will be above will not be beneath because the glory of God is showing in your life and your glory is shining and so shall it be in the name of Jesus. Our glory shall arise and shine in the name of Jesus. And another thing that will happen to you when your glory starts shining is that celebration will replace rejection and success will replace failure in your life. Amen. Celebration will replace rejection and success will replace failure in your life in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I'm reading uh, that's in Isaiah from verse 15 to 16. He said, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee. He said, I will make you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. I claim it in Jesus' name. I don't know about you. Look at it. He said, whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated. That means where you have been rejected, where you have been demolished, where people are saying that where is your God. We have people who are saying, oh, we can never move forward. No progress is coming this way. No progress is coming that way. Oh, that our people say, if it's here, one, you're okay, or lack it, or see, or lack it, or lack it. So that means that wherever people have said that it has finished for you, that is where you are just starting. He said, you that have been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through you. That means you have been so isolated, you have been so abandoned. He said, uh, he said there, he said, I will make you an eternal excellency, a joy of many generations. Amen, in Jesus' name. Amen. An eternal excellency, meaning that throughout, not only in this life, but in the afterlife, forever and ever, you will have that spirit of excellence. That excellency will follow you. And he said, a joy of many generations. That means people will not forget you. Even after you've gone, people will still remember you. We are talking about our Babalola today. Is it not because of the glory of God that was shining in his life? It's because his, his glory arise and shine. We are talking of so many great men of God, so many people that are not talking of those alive, those that are born ages ago. It is their work that is living, not you. So it is not what you are doing now, but it is what people say after. It is what you leave behind. That means you are going to leave a sort of legacy behind. The legacy that people will continue to glorify God in your life. Because what? Because your glory shine. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. Our glory shall shine in the mighty name of Jesus. And verse 16 says, He said, Thou shalt also suck the milk of the Gentiles, and shalt suck the breast of kings. And thou shalt know that I, the Lord, am the Savior and the Redeemer, the mighty one of Jacob. That means you will dine in the places for kings. Even kings and queens will know you. They will bow. They will bow before you. That means you will be respected. That honor, that dignity will come unto you. And so shall it be in the mighty name of Jesus. So another thing, when your glory starts shining, is that divine favor of God will always encompass you throughout your lifetime. And you will always have the best of everything. It's in twofold. Divine favor of God will always be encompass you throughout your lifetime. And you will always have the best of everything. The best of everything. It's not that you're just going to have something, but the best of everything. Let's go to verse 17. He said, for brass, I will bring gold. Amen. You know brass. Brass is top class. But instead of you to have that inferior brass, it's going to supply you with gold. Amen. That means you're going to have the best of the best. And he said, he said, instead of iron, I will bring silver. Amen. Even if your what is iron, it's going to do something much more than that. I will bring silver. He said, and for wood, it's going to give you brass. You know, wood can easily break, but brass is strong. And he said, and for stones, iron. Stone, you can easily break it with hammer, but iron is very strong. So what he's saying is that it's not going to give you a little. It's not going to give you much, but it's going to give you more than enough. It's going to give you extraordinary things. And it's not going to give you inferior things. It's going to give you superior quality that, you, that will be with you and you'll use uh, for everlastingly. And that is how it's going to be in the name of Jesus. He said, I will also make thy officer's peace and thy exactus righteousness. So that means everything about you is going to be what? It's going to be calm. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So the next one is that the peace of God shall envelope you and all that belongs to you. The peace of God shall envelope you and all that belongs to you. And look at verse 18. He said, violence shall no more be had in thy land. He said, wasting or destruction within thy borders. But thou shalt call thy words salvation 
and thy gates praise. That means you will just be like those in heaven. You just be praising God. People will come unto you. People will be saved through you. The salvation of Christ will be you. Be, you I mean, you are going to be forwarding that thing. That is exactly what Jesus said. He said he is going. Well, he said that you know, when Jesus was going, he told his disciples, he said, I am going to my father. He said, those who are good are following me. He said, I have done my work, but greater works you are going to do than I have done. People will say, Jesus, my savior. How can I do a greater works than him? It's not that greater, but he has finished it, but we have to continue it. So that means he has perfected it, but he has given us that errand. He has given us no, that course that we should continue. And because he has gone, but he's still alive, so we should continue. That means we should bring the whole world. And that is why this place is telling us, said, violence shall no more be had in the land. It's that wasting of destruction within thy brother, but thy, but thou shalt call thy words salvation and the gates praise. That means that you will what? You are going to promote the salvation of God to the whole world, and you are going to be letting people praise God. That means you are going to change the world. You are going to be a great impact onto the world. So you see that we need our glory to shine. Because a lot of things is being what? It's being combined with it. And our glory shall shine in Jesus' name. So, and the last one there is that everything God has done for you shall remain permanent and become legacy for your descendants. Everything God has done for you shall remain permanent and become legacy for your descendants. I'm going to read from 19 to 22. He said, the sun shall no more be the light by day. Neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. That means those ones are lesser light because God created them. But the Lord himself shall be unto you an everlasting light and thy God thy glory. What is saying that you are not going to depend on the sun or them because those ones are less for you. But God himself will walk with you directly. God himself will be your God. God himself is like you have express invitation. You know, you, know you, you, are, you don't need any visa to go to him. It's like you just have the first class attendance unto him. That express is, is present with the express with you. That's what he's saying. He said, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light and thy God thy glory. He said, thy sun shall no more go down. That means you'll be a shining light forever. What God has done for you shall be permanent in Jesus' name. I'm not hearing amen. I'm hearing it for myself. And, and he said, he said, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself, for the Lord shall be thy everlasting light, and the days of thy morning shall be ended. That means there will be no sorrow again in your life. Sorrow will not, not, will not visit you. All your morning will be turned into dancing. All your sorrowful nights will be drunk on into a joyful morning, and you will see the glory of God. And it also says, he said, thy, of 21, he said, thy people also shall be all righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. That means it, shall be, it will be permanent. What God has done for you, nobody will be able to take it from you. He said, the branch of his planting, the work of his hand, that, he may, that I may be glorified. So what he's telling you now is that everything he has done for you, he will complete it. He will perfect it. No one will take your joy. And your joy will not be turned into sorrow. And that is how it's going to be in Jesus' name. And he said, that, verse 22, he said, a little one shall become a thousand, and a small one a strong nation. I, the Lord, will extend it in his time. That means the Lord will turn that little thing you have into plenty. It's going to turn you. It's going to increase you. It's going to enlarge you. And that family, that your family, is going to become a nation. Mm -hmm. Or don't you believe that? Amen. That, means, that means that that family will not perish. It will be what? It will be a sort of God's favorite. And that's how it's going to be. And the Lord said, I will extend it in your own time. That is in this present time, in your life, in my life. And that is how it's going to be in the mighty name of Jesus. However, you know, for all this glory to shine, we really need to be very careful. But there are some people, they don't want it. You can see how beautiful all these things have been, how the glory will shine. But do you think your enemy likes it? You know, that is why the Bible tells us that when men are sleeping, he said the enemy came and so tired into the what? In the midst of the sea. But the Lord said, let them grow together. And at the end of the day, we'll see what will go. We'll harvest them. So why? That means we need to be careful. So we need to learn some facts about the glory. That means there are some negative things that will happen. And the first thing is that the glories can be exchanged. Glories can be exchanged if care is not taken. You can see an example of Esau. Esau Esau's glory was exchanged by his mother right from when he was her back. The mother diverted his blessing onto Jacob. So his glory was exchanged. Esau was left. Although we say it's the hand of God and everything, but that is the work of the mother because why the mother preferred uh, Esau. And not only that, you know, there are a lot of things happening. I know, I remember I went to school with uh, 
uh, her boy then in my school, you know, when I was in the second school, this boy was very brilliant. But then when all of us were going to the university and everything, we did not go. Why? Because in his family, they said the eldest must go first. And but the elder, bro the elder brother happens to be somebody that is not even in education. So they didn't allow him to do, he had very good results. They didn't allow him to do any jam or anything. So he could not go because his brother was not going. And he had, this, uh, he had all his papers just at two sittings. He had everything excellent. But then the brother is always having F9 parallel. F9 parallel. But the mother and the father said no. Never in their life did they promote the younger one. And then did they lay the But the boy, the elder one just stayed there. But thank God today now the boy is a lawyer. He struggled on his own. But after so many years, and that other brother that is there now, is still there. So you can imagine, but the boy struggled on it. So it was not allowed because that is what goes on in the family. So you can see that the family of, um, uh, what do you call it, of uh, Esau and Jacob, they are still the same thing. It's, it's still happening everywhere. They say no. They say no. Yeah, because we are online, I cannot say this one that I want to say because it happened. It has to relate to my So I'm not going to say. So it's just like them, you know, there is um, this uh, twin uh, brother and sister. So the mom always wants, because it's a boy and he gets, oh no. You do this to the girl, don't do it to the boy. No, always let the boy lead and don't allow the girl to lead because in my family, girls don't lead. But the girl is smart, the girl is sharp, and you can see that she's more intelligent than the boy. It's happening presently. So you can see that is glory being exchanged. So if care is not taken, what is going to happen? They are going to diminish it. So we should be very, very careful. We should treat all our children individually. Don't compare them with anything. Because this one that does not, that's not good academically will have something in life that is good for you. Just find it out. Let these children, let them move on in their life. Don't persuade them to do what they are not. Let them make up their mind and pray along with them and supervise them and monitor them. Because whatever they want to do will be in their heart. But a lot of things happen to us as well. Our parents will be forcing us to do what we don't want to do because they happen. But now it's a modern time. Leave these children alone. Ask them, follow them, and let them develop themselves. Don't say no, because um, Yala Baja is this, you too, you must be that. Because this one is the, no, they are created differently. Even twins, they have different destiny. They are born at the same time from the same mother, but they have different destinies. Please let them achieve what they want to do in life. Don't force them. Just monitor them and then pray for them. And the Lord will be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. We shall not lose them in Jesus' name. So another thing is that glories can be delayed. Glories can be delayed. You can see that in, the, uh, in Daniel chapter 10. In the case of Daniel, Daniel has been praying. And he has been praying. And the angel said, in the very first day Daniel started praying, the Lord has heard him and he has answered him. But he was delayed by the prince, prince of Persia for 21 days. So we can see that all our prayers, that is why we need to go on with our prayers and we must not relent. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Another thing is that glory can be imprisoned or hijacked. Glory can be imprisoned or hijacked. Like in the case of um, uh, Joseph, you know Joseph, his glory was thrown into the pit. But by the grace of God, the pit did not hold it. His glory was thrown into prison. But by the grace of God, the pit, the prison did not hold his glory. And he was able to do what? He was able to come out successful and also able to come out as a man of authority with dominion. And I pray that as Joseph's glory was thrown into the pit and the pit could not withhold it, and as his glory was thrown into the prison and the prison could not withhold it, all our glory shall be set free in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. No prison on heart and no pit of darkness will be able to delay or withhold our glory in the mighty name Amen. of Jesus. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So another thing is that we know that glories can be diverted, as in the case of uh, Ephraim and Manasseh. It's the same thing. The man, the, the grandfather wants to bless them. He put his right hand on the younger one and the left hand on the older one. Whereas it's supposed to be the other way around. The elder is going, supposed to get to be right one and the other one to be the left. But what happened? Jo Jacob tried to correct, but you know, uh, Joseph tried to correct it, but he, he, know, he just left it it's like this. How can someone bless someone like this? You know, it's supposed to be like this. This one here, this one, and, the, and Joseph actually placed the children at the right place. The elder one at the uh, grandfather's right hand and the other one at the left hand. But the grandfather did like this, cross blessing. So that means the glory was diverted. The one, but the younger one was given unto the older one and that one. 
our glory shall not be diverted in the mighty name of Jesus. We can see that in Genesis 48, verse 14. So another thing is that glories can be wasted or terminated. Our glory shall not be wasted or terminated. This is the worst part of it. Glories shall be wasted or terminated. As in the case of Gehazi, uh, you, know, you know him, the greedy, the greedy man. Uh, Elisha got double portion of anointing from Elijah. And who was he supposed to give? He had only one apprentice, Gehazi. He, he could have had times for the portion. But Elijah had to die. Elisha had to die for the double portion of anointing. Because why? Because of worldliness. Because Gehazi was, he was greasy, he was greedy, he was worldly, he was a liar, he was dishonest. He was not even, he was not even fit to be a worker. You know, because everything is not even, as I said, he's not believing God. He's diverting everything to his own. So this is a lesson to all of us. It's making that we should be very, very careful making wrong choices. And we should hold our spiritual life very, very closely. And we should be very, very careful. We should hold it like a Bible. Because once we miss a step, the devil will come in. There's always gates and there's always entrances. There is always legal oaths that the devil will creep in. I pray that the devil will not creep into our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And any gate of opening that we have left carelessly for the devil to come in, the Lord shall shut it with fire in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So we should be very, very careful of our spiritual life. Because one thing is, if one's glory is terminated or wasted, one will have, it, will have to reckon with it in heaven. So, because that means that person is a failure. We will not fail in the name of Jesus. And our glory shall not be terminated in Jesus' name. So, what do we do to make our glory arise and shine? The first thing we need to do is that we need to connect to the light of life, which is Jesus. We need to connect to the life of life, which is Jesus, and be committed to him. That is, we have to rededicate our life unto Jesus. You know, John, 6, John 4, 16, John 14, 6, he said that, Jesus told us, he said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He said, no man comes to me except by God. So that means the first thing we need to do is to connect with Jesus. You might say, oh, I already know Jesus. And yes, you dedicate your life to, to him. If you'll be serving, if you'll be very warm, try to change it and make sure that you are hot. You are hot. You know, Jesus told them, he said, if you are either hot or cold, it doesn't tolerate warm. So if you are doing a little in, a little outside, you know you are nowhere. So it's either you are either hot or cold. Cold is not good. Be hot for Christ. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Our glory shall not be terminated in the mighty name of Jesus. Yeah. And the second thing we need to do is that we should always eat and be filled with the word of God in order to receive the light of God to the fullest. We should always eat and be filled with the word of God in order to receive the light of God to the fullest. Meaning that what do we do? We should be doing our Bible study um, all our quiet time with God. Because when we look at um, Psalm 119, 130, he said us, he said the entrance of the world giveth light. That means there is no way we can get that light. You can say, oh, I'm born again. I already accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior. But what do you have? You are not reading the word. How do you want to know God? The Bible is the, is the mind of God. If you say you are a child of God and then you are not going into these words, then you are not yet a child of God because you are, that is the mind of God. That is the only way you can see God. You cannot be going on the way and say, oh, I see God. Where is God? What is his color? What is his shape? He said he, is, he created us in his own image. So this is God. When you hold on to your Bible, when you are studying it, you are studying God. You want to know about God. And that is the only way you can grow. And that is the only way that your life can be transformed. And that is the only way that you can fulfill your divine destiny. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So another thing is that you should confess positive things with your mouth. You should call forth positive things with your mouth. Like um, uh, Job 22, verse 28, he said, You shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. That is, and the light of God shall shine upon it, which means that anything you say, you should believe it. And you should be very, very careful. The, he told us, he said, Let the weak say, I am strong. Let the poor say, I am rich. So don't come, even if you are feeling that thing, don't say, I am sick. I am healed in the name of Jesus, because the Bible tells us that we have dominion over everything. Everything means every other thing, including man. Everything God has created. So when anything is happening to you, you have dominion. Even if it's financial problem or financial debt or anything, you have dominion over it. Don't let it take over you. Think of the bigness of God, not the bigness of that problem. If that is what happens to a lot of people. A lot of people with depression, with all this anxiety, with all this mental illness, it's because they are making their problems bigger than it's supposed to be. That problem is there. 
put it aside. Think of God bigger than that problem. But God is bigger than the problem. He's bigger than anything. So when you see God in your problem, when you see God in the light that you are supposed to see him, then that problem will become nothing. I remember my very good friend at um, uh, Tuvata. I'm not going to mention her name. When they were, they were going through all these things, she would say, Mike, hey, Mike. I take my money, I buy a jatu too, I finish the last cobble on me. Mamala was very good friend. <laughs> you know, she would say it. And I love the way she says it. She said, I won't let these people give me hypertension. You know, this is another. I won't let people just give me hypertension. And you will see them when they were eating, they will take a whole big fish. You know, the fish, they will not even cut it. Who won? Who will smoke it and she will drink it with Gary. Say, no, or just, or just. which is good. <laughs> which is good. You know, if they say, ah, no, no, it's not me, Mike. I will go to this, I will buy, I will buy anything I want. I will eat. It was not there, I buy my beko. That's one of the things. And that was the spirit, and she came out of it. And today she's testifying to the glory of God. You can see. So that is how we should see. When you take that problem too much, the problem will kill you. Before even that comes. They said, that was why on this uh, shape, I said, he said what? Well, they said, how was that many times before their death? So that is exactly what problem is doing. But when you see God, just say, okay. Jesus said, when you bring this problem unto me, you will do what? Say, come unto me, you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So that rest of God, let it always dwell with you. And the only thing you can see, you can get that rest, is just for you to lay your bodies down at the feet of Jesus. Forget about everything. The problem is still there, but forget about it. Just put your mind that God of solution is working on it. And as long as you believe it, confess it, and it will manifest. Because whatever you believe, and confess with your mouth because the Bible tells us, it says, there is power of death and life in the tongue. So whatever you say, if you say, oh, you are finished, definitely you are killing yourself. But if you say, no, this thing, I will see your hands. I will triumph over you. Before you know it, that thing will start manifesting. So we are the God that told us, we are what? We are gods. That means whatever you say, Jesus promised us, said, what you bind on heart, you will bind it to heaven. Whatever you lose on heart, you lose it in heaven. Let's be using that. So no matter the situation, no matter, no matter how dreadful, how bad it is, know that God is bigger than that situation. And God is in control. And you too can be in control. Let that situation on the floor. Put it at the feet of Jesus and you will see the glory of God. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. His glory will shine unto us in Jesus' name. Amen. And another thing is that you have to obey God at all times. And you should follow his instructions and directions in order to arise and shine. Obey God at all times, follow his instructions and direction so that you can walk, arise and shine. When you look at the, the Buddhist book, uh, Deuteronomy 28, perhaps 1 to 14, it's very sweet. You know, all the blessings. If you follow the works of the Lord, all these blessings shall come unto you. Nobody likes leading the other side, including me. But I was saying, no, those ones are for my enemy. But it is a fact. It is, it, there is a comma there. It's a condition. If you follow, that means if you obey. So if you are always disobedient and you are always rebellious and you want to eat the fruit of your life, you want to eat everything, know that you are just like contradicting yourself. The word of the Lord does not lie. It will always be fulfilled. And God is not wicked. He has stated everything he wants and until we follow it, the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Then, the last one there, you have to live a faithful life, a faithful and holy life that will glorify God for his life to shine upon you. Because how do you call yourself a child of God when you are not living according to the dictates of God? God is holy. And they said, all who must live with what? We must also be holy as our well. God is holy. So we must always strive towards holiness, meaning that we should leave all these strivings alone. We should strive towards perfection. Man can be perfect. You say people cannot be perfect, but with the spirit of God. But say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. We are not going by our strength. It's not by our power. But if we go on doing it by the strength of, of Christ, that means we can achieve that height. We can achieve that perfection. It is possible. But the only thing is cling on to God. Hold on to him and make him your everything and follow him. Listen to him and always do his bidding. And the world Lord will be with us in the mighty name of Jesus. That glory that you and I are always after. It's going to come unto us. It's going to arise and shine in the name of Jesus. And the glory of this ministry also will arise and shine in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Everything God has ordained for us shall come to pass in the name of Jesus. Whether the devil likes it or not. Whether household wickedness likes it or not. Whether all the enemies of our fathers our mothers are anywhere, anyhow. Whether they like it or not. The word of the Lord will be the final one in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is only what God has willed 
that will come to pass in our life in the name of Jesus. May the Lord bless his word in the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's take this through prayer for his Say, my, my glory, hear the voice of the living God. Arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, my glory, hear the voice of the living God. Arise and shine. Arise and shine. In the name of Jesus, for in Jesus' mighty name we pray. And I want us to repeat this. Say, as the prison could not hold back Joseph's glory from shining. Powers on earth, in the heavenlies, and the waters shall not hold back my glory. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. And Father and our God, we just want to thank you. We appreciate you for the word of life you have sent unto us today. We bless you for your servant that you have used for us. We thank you because after today, our glory will arise and shine in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for your servant. re her. Amen. Multiply her. And increase your usher in her life. Amen. And we pray that she shall not run dry in the name of Jesus. Amen. Fresh auction, fresh anointing, and fresh power shall rest upon her in the name of Jesus. Our glory and that of all the members of our household will arise and shine today in the name of Jesus. Amen. And to that brother and to that sister, saying the loudest amen, I pray and I prophesy. That even in the midst of, the, of all that is happening, your glory shall arise and shine in the name of Jesus. Yeah. I pray for that sister and I pray for that brother. That can say that heaven rendered amen. That if they will celebrate the glory of anyone this year, it shall be your glory in the name of Jesus. Yeah. But Bible says, in the year that King Uzziah died, Isaiah manifested his glory. I pray for you. There's many that must be buried. For your glory to manifest for all us to see. They shall be buried in the name of Jesus. Any power anyway, competing with your glory, challenging your glory, shall be disgraceable in the name of Jesus. Lord, I will thank you. Lord, I pray for your people. That shall be well with them. The offering and the touch you brought to me. My God, we accept it, Amen. multiply it, Amen. and return it back to you in billion fold. You shall not lack any good thing. Amen. If others are lacking, you shall not lack. Amen. God will always provide for all your needs. Amen. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. For those connecting with us, beloved, you can continue dropping your money in your envelope and give to your local assembly. And if you are led to give to this ministry, send us a message and we'll give you our account number in Nigeria or United anywhere you over. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Beloved, let's listen to an announcement before we bring the service on in. This is Father of Faith, Christ Ministry International. And I believe all those connected to this service today, I believe you can hear us loud and clear. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. We don't want to take you for granted. You can see a new name Thank today. Ayeni, Ayeni Lola. God bless you. Ma Osa, God bless you. Uh, the, uh, Sister Joki Odumeru, Sister Epi from America, Sister Fola, our landlady, God bless you for your love. God bless you, ma. Sister Moreni Keji, God bless you. Mamela Dokun, God bless you. The Balogons, God bless you. God bless you, Pastor Tung, God bless you, Sister Stella, God bless you. God bless everyone connected to this service. And it shall be well with you in Jesus' name. Our next service will be on Tuesday, between the hour of 6.30 and 8.30. The hour of revival. And our night vigil for this month will be coming up this Friday. It's just one day night vigil every month, which we tie to or we call the night of all possibility where God can do anything, where God can make every possibility to become possible. And it's going to be between the hour of 11 p.m. and 3 a.m. 
we're still using the same time with Nigeria. We're in our summer, the time only change when we move to winter. But those in America, we have some people using four hours, some using five hours. So just calculate. Mommy, I, a lot of I believe your own is now four hours, no more five hours because you have changed the place you were before. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, just, just calculate it with the time of the United Kingdom. So if it is five hours, then it's going to be six, I mean, 6 p.m. in your place. If it is four, it's going to be 7 p.m. And God will bless you as you join us. It's three hours program between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m. on Friday. And every Saturday, we normally have a prayer line between the hour of 9 p.m. and 10 p.m. One took place last night, and we are continuing next coming Saturday. We started a prayer last night, smashing the forehead of your Goliath. And we're still praying the same prayer next Saturday. And if we can finish, good. If not, we continue up for Saturday. And God will bless you. You can connect through phone. And at the same time, you can connect through Zoom. Because connecting from maybe Nigeria sometimes can be more expensive to be on phone for one hour. We can use your Zoom. And God will bless you. God will bless you. God will bless you. All our programs still remain the same. And God will bless you as you join us for all this program. And it shall be well with you. And this God, God of this month, they will give you your testimony in the name of Jesus. Get over you have listened to.